And welcome back. In HealthLink tonight, roughly 30 million people, nearly 10% of our population, has type 2 diabetes. Healthcare professionals are doing what they can, and still this disease claims 80,000 people every year. One senior investigator at the UW Medicine's Diabetes Institute is thinking out of the box, way outside the box, and getting impressive results. Here's King 5's Amity Idrisi with tonight's HealthLink. Levastrectomy was invented by a friend of mine. Dr. David Cummings, a professor of medicine, talks about ways to fight type 2 diabetes. The two leading causes of death and disability that are rising the fastest everywhere are increased body size and increased blood sugar, in other words, obesity and diabetes. As program co-chair for the World Congress on Interventional Therapies for Type 2 Diabetes, he's trying to get the medical community to look at treatment in a very different way. There are at least a dozen different newly discovered weight-independent anti-diabetes mechanisms engaged by metabolic surgery. Gastric bariatric surgery, developed and used primarily to help people lose weight, generally delivers positive changes for the many health problems that come with obesity. Endocrinologists like me usually think of diabetes type 2 as a chronic, progressive, relentless disease where our goal is just to stave off the terrible complications like blindness, amputations, kidney disease, heart attacks, strokes, death. We seldom think you can actually get rid of the disease. Unless you consider the changes that take place in a patient after metabolic surgery. Bariatric operations were designed to promote weight loss and they are tremendous at that. But we in the field are trying to re brand this type of operation as metabolic surgery to a greater extent emphasize its benefits on metabolic diseases like diabetes, blood pressure, cholesterol, sleep apnea, GERD, etc. It was filled on July 24th, 2018. That's the last time I filled diabetes medication. Ron Lentz is a husband, father, grandfather, and former diabetic who had a list of serious ailments, including cardiomyopathy, which was leading to a heart transplant. Last year, he was taking 28 medications a day. My insulin medication alone uh, is around $17,000 annually. Ron had a gastric sleeve procedure back in September of 2018. Before surgery, he weighed 327 pounds, wasn't very mobile, and had a shortened life expectancy. The procedure was to prepare him for a heart transplant, but it would turn his life around. I walk with my grandchildren, I play with my grandchildren, I take them to the zoo. Couldn't do that until after I had this um, procedure. Ron has lost 70 pounds so far. More importantly, his overall health has greatly improved. At least 70% of people with type 2 diabetes who undergo metabolic surgery will enjoy complete remission. Dr. Cummings believes the guidelines to qualify for metabolic surgery are too high. He's working to change that. But there's another reason keeping people from getting the procedure. A lot of this has to do with obesity bias. In other words, both inherent and external. Inherent is I'm guilty, I know that my obesity is my own fault, and external is other people blaming that on you. So far, there are changes to those guidelines in many parts of the world. They've been adopted by many countries outside of the United States. China, India, Indonesia, Japan, Korea, Australia, many countries in South America, the Middle East, the United Kingdom, but they haven't really penetrated the United States yet. Ron now walks four to five miles a day. He's active with his grandkids and has a positive outlook on life. I can go wherever I want to go. I can do whatever I want to do. I don't take any insulin with me. I don't need it. I'm able to do things with my grandchildren that I couldn't do two years ago. Dr. Cummings says gastric bypass and similar operations are more effective, longer lasting, and less expensive than current medicines, diet, and exercise. It's also vastly safer with the use of laparoscopic tools. However, less than 1% of patients who qualify actually have the procedure. Dr. Cummings hopes that with more widespread understanding, doctors and patients will think of the surgery as more than just cosmetic. For HealthLink, I'm Amatia Drisi.